Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Oh, this was a bad idea. Hey, land lovers, it's Nathan. Just trying to get my sea legs back on the high seas of nausea. Oh, this is not the cruise ship I asked for. Well, it seems we are experiencing some stormy weather, so I'm sitting in a corner to talk about Battle Bards. Battle Bards makes the finest in role-playing audio. It's so realistic, you feel like you're actually there. For better or worse in my case. They also have a sound mixer that allows you to take different audio pieces and merge them together seamlessly. And as a listener of Delve, you can uh, get even more audio when you sign up. And uh, I'll tell you about that at the end of the show because I'm too busy rocking back and forth slowly in the corner right now. Oh, Battlebards, uh, play the game. Feel the game. Captain, can we can we pull over for a minute? That's not how it works? <sighs> We now return to Alex's conversation with Breeze Grigas, talking about the different game modes that you can play in Aegis. So, yeah, with two, four, two, four, and six player uh, overall and all the numbers in between there. But then we also have uh, four kind of different game modes that you can mix and match with those. It's, uh, it, I, uh, we, I coined this the other day in one of our team meetings. It's like our game is a combining game mode strategy game. <laughs> so we have main game mode is just fight robots. You have your team of robots versus your opponent's team of robots, and you fight. Uh, second, and you have you start with five, and your opponent starts with five, and you kind of combine and destroy as the game goes on. Second game mode, big important. The uh, second kind of big important one is called point control, and that's a victory point based game mode where you're trying to capture territory on the map, and um, you can spawn new robots in as they die, and it turns into like more of a uh, turns into more of like a uh, board game war game kind of thing with like a longer play and then we got third game mode which is machine chess and that's actually the same as the first game mode but you move back and forth and alternate uh one robot one robot one robot one robot as opposed to the main game mode which is you move all five they move all five and uh so machine chess is pretty cool um it just kind of it, it changes the way you think about certain tactics in the game uh, and then the last game mode is called Combine Rondo, which is a game mode where you can start with the big, awesome Voltron guys on the board. And it kind of has like a point allocation system, like a lot of war games do. So you get like nine points, and then you can allocate those nine points. Every robot's worth a certain number of points equals to the number of letters on it. So if it's just an A-type robot, it's worth one point. But if it's an AEG-type robot, it's worth two points. So you can, and technically in this game mode, you could use nine level one robots or three level threes. And so the thing is, you have those four game modes, and you could, if you really wanted to, have a point control game where you play with combined rondo rules, or a point control game where you play with machine chess rules, or a machine chess game where you play with combined rondo rules, because they all kind of no don't interfere with each other rules wise. So you can put, so you can kind of mix and match the different game modes for a whole ton of different variants. And so we like to go to exponentially increasing uh, exponentially increasing replayability. <laughs> so we have 90 robots and four game modes that can kind of all be mixed together, um, and plus the campaign stuff. And then on the six, and then six player adds a whole ton of other things. Like there's six player free for all, obviously, but then there's like 2v2v2, two two two, and then 3v3. Three three. And then you can combine those game modes with, the other kind of different variant versions, and it's it's ridiculous. So yeah, a lot of a lot of game for fifty bucks. That that is a lot of game. Um, I'm just trying to think of the different game modes you can combine, and then you can do the combined rondo rules, and you get two v two combined rondo. It's just like you have two with very few forces and two with a bunch of forces. Yeah, so like you're playing like like two players might be using super big powerful guys where the other two players are using, like, a lot of little guys. I, I can see that being really interesting with a point hold system. Yep. Um, because the more guys you have, the more places you can hold, but the less powerful they'll be because they're going to be spread out. And then in the point control game mode, the larger robots are actually worth more points when they capture things. So it kind of all balances out. It's, 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 it's a game. It's a lot of game. 
<laughs> and then and then you said you've got the campaign that you've added too. So is that a single player campaign or is it for multiple players? The idea would be that it would just be for it would be for you know you and your friends to play as normally, but it would kind of point you in a direction to play with in case you just open the box and you have no idea what to do with all this stuff. Um, so it'd be like, uh, it'd be like you use these robots. Your opponent uses like robot the this these kinds of robots, and then the win condition for this specific chapter of the campaign is this, or complete it in this many turns, or et cetera, et cetera. So it's like uh, it kind of like it's simultaneously like a campaign and a tutorial, and then um, gives uh, you ideas of what to do if you're uh, yeah if you're overwhelmed and like even though we have all this content though still got to stress the game is literally like single digit number five robot dice chucking game that takes like twenty minutes to play. <laughs> so. but, but you can turn it into something completely different if you want to apparently because you have about five or six different rule sets now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the game is uh the complexity of the game is scalable as needed. Right. No, that's really cool. Like my mind right now I'm going to where you have the point uh the combined rondo rules. And then you could like do combined rondo with a campaign setting, which would be really interesting. Yeah, exactly. But I I'm familiar with playing like war games like Warhammer forty K as well. So I'm sitting here and I'm going, Oh, I wonder if you could get like a variant where you do a campaign, but you have, like, EXP or point buy system where you can equip different weapons and robots get XP and get different stuff. But that's probably a lot more complex than even what you're doing now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, uh, maybe maybe something like... We're definitely open to, like, doing really crazy stuff in the future. It's pretty much all on the table. <laughs> We're putting a lot... It's because like, it's like... If the game succeeded last October, it wouldn't have some of this stuff. So, so as the game has been kind of in development hell for longer, we've thought of more and more cool stuff to make work. So it's it's kind of almost beneficial that it's uh, been kind of uh, on the shelf for so long, because now the players are getting all this cool, really uh, content in their game. Absolutely. Now, I'm pretty sure people who get the game are going to be very happy with the uh, complexity variants and the rules variants they can use. Because if you don't want to play say, just with your friend, you can play with, you know, three more of your friends and turn it into a free-for-all and just brutally murder each other with robots. Oh, yeah. So do you have a favorite game mode of all the ones that you've got? I actually, I really like Machine Chess because it's sort of a, yeah, it's sort of a game mode. And Machine Chess is cool because it's it's essentially the exact same thing as the main game, but it just, cha but it just changes the way you think about how it works. Um... So you still get like the cool quick playtime, uh, but uh, you just think about it very differently. And then the other, and of course, I really like Combine Rondo, mostly because these two these two game modes are my baby, and the um, our other designer Jesse Clark Point Control is his baby. Um, so I really I really like Combine Rondo because that's the game mode that was never really meant to be super balanced. <laughs> so it's uh it's really just for it's a treat for everybody who just wants to play the game with big dumb powerful robots missile lasers flying everywhere and that's kind of like what it feels like there's no like there's no build up <laughs> there's like you start with all the cool stuff on the board but there's still enough uh strategic team building and variance there to kind of make it feel um it's not very solvable can you so, uh, uh, can, uh <laughs> when you're playing yeah. combine rondo can you combine the robots in the field yes Okay. So even though you just with combined robots, all, all the rules, all the other rules of the game are still on. Okay, because because that makes a lot more variance. If you say start with nine, uh, you know, one point robots, and you combine them, oh, one to make an Aegis robot, and then it's a lot more powerful than it was at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like you guys have put a lot of work into these different game modes. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'd say so. Especially, especially, it's a lot of a lot of the work has got definitely gone into point control because that's the one that required um, like a lot of like numbers tweaking and balance because you have like the part where you can bring in new robots as the game goes on, which doesn't exist in the main game. And then there's just the uh, uh, like the the actual point values of the territory capturing and stuff and making it as intuitive as possible while also making it like balanced and not super swingy. 
So that was the one that definitely had the most work put into it. And then like machine chess and combined Rondo definitely came about after just it's just like they're almost byproducts of staring at the game for a very long time and thinking, you know, that would be really interesting to do. And then you like you try it out a few times and you realize, yeah, yeah, this works. It works. There's really not much wrong with it. It might require like we found out that like machine chess requires us to put like a player one token in the game because like the 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 way the turns work changes around so that was like one thing that we figured out and we had to like clearly define how certain turn orders work when one player has more robots than the other um and like combine rondo combine rondo is the the really dopey fun (laughs) is the really dopey fun game mode so we had to like kind of clarify a few things on that but that's that's the one we kind of letting uh fly by the seat of its pants um and then like uh we also thought 2v2 was also uh we've been doing a little bit more thinking on that to try to make it feel more like um you're actually like 2v2ing so we 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 were thinking about uh what if uh you and your partner's robots could combine and how does that work we put more thought into pre-game modes that we already had and then we started thinking about them in context with mixing them with other game modes so yeah i guess you yeah we did put a lot of work (laughs) yeah but i really think about it yes long way around yeah yeah we did so uh yeah. so here's a thought for me is is I know you have the the point by the normal game mode, the point hold, the combined rondo, and then uh you have two v two, you have three v three, four v four uh except those things like that, one v one, v one, v one, all those. What about uh can you use the rules to do something like a three v one uh combined rondo where the three people have the same amount of points as the one person, but there you've got three different people strategizing against one. It'd be more like a assault and defense kind of role at that point, mm-hmm. especially if you're doing a point and hold. Yep. Uh, but can, oh, could you do something like that? Yeah, absolutely. That's actually the kind of thing that what the campaign mode is for. It's like you this game, this chapter of the story is a three v one where three players are using these three commanders and the other person is using combined rondo rules and they have like a level four they have like two level fours on the field from the start of the game um go for it and uh or they have this many points to allocate uh and so then three people have this like it's like arch enemy mode where the three people have to gang up on the one guy um so yeah like definitely things like that like uh, the really cool like uh kind of esoteric mixtures of the game modes is stuff that I'm going to want to do in the campaign. Nice. So I'm sure I I have something in mind that I think Nathan would be wondering about. um, Yep. Because both Nathan and I used to play a lot of Magic the Gathering. Yep. And I'm sure he would want to ask you something if you had any idea about robots at different rarity levels. (laughs) Rarity levels? Yep. Like, you Um, can have... you, you. I'm sure in the box itself, they're all... They'd all be, like, common or whatever. But are there any robots that are, like epic robots or the robots that are like legendary robots for instance yeah i mean a little bit like the game itself is kind of going to be structured like an lcg where we'll release like non-randomized expansions like 20 robots 40 robots 20 robots 40 robots so there's like no actual like rarity but there are like definitely things that set certain robots apart we obviously have uh we have commander robots um so those are kind of like the legendary creatures they have abilities that kind of change the way your team functions then you can build teams around them um so those are cool uh we have kind of faction locked robots that do sort of weird interesting things but they can only be used with certain other they can only be used in like cert with like certain commanders and then like uh then like when you think about like combining pretty much all the level fours and the level five robots are made to feel super premium and special because they're they can be really they can they they can be really weird and they can also be really obviously really powerful. Um, so the goal is to make, especially like pretty much all the super high level robots, uh, fives, fours, and definitely a lot of threes. We want to make those feel, um, yeah, very specialized and unique and memorable almost as characters. So yeah, there's, yes. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking, I'm like, Nathan would ask about something like that if he were here. Damn, he's not here. <laughs> but like magic is is a trading card game you know it's not it's a randomized one obviously you never know what you're going to get uh whereas you guys aren't doing the randomized thing you always know you're going to get these robots when you play 
Yep. Um, which doesn't mean you can't do something like that. It just means that everyone's going to have the same options, um, mm-hmm. which actually makes it a lot more balanced and fair, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Balance and fairness is always good. So there's a lot. Of, there's definitely uh, there's a lot of different team building uh, opportunities in the game. So we just wanted to, we were giving players that kind of like outright. We didn't really want to. Uh, we wanted the game to have really cheap buy in too, so we didn't want people to like have to spend like five thousand dollars just to get like the one guy that they wanted. <laughs> so we're just like kind of giving them. We're just like putting stuff out there, and uh, and then it's kind of up to the player to make the best choices as opposed to the best financial choices. It's like, oh, buy 30 packs today. Do I need to eat today, or do I need to be able to beat my opponent at Aegis? Hmm. That's all, that's one of our new taglines. You can eat and play Aegis in the same day. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. It'll be great for people who don't have money but still want a game. Mm-hmm. Which I, I think might be a larger quantity of gamers than we want to admit. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that was a really big thing with Aegis, actually, because, you know, Aegis is basically a war game. And war games are very expensive by nature. Yep, um, I, I enjoy painting Warhammer figures, and I only pick up ones that I want to paint because I cannot afford the hobby. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's it's ridiculous. Um, so we wanted to like, kind of he just was almost made to just uh, get that war game experience onto somebody's table without having to spend that kind of money. Because like I love strategy games, and I always I grew up playing like all these cool strategy games, and I wanted to like and I looked at the ones that were available for tabletop and i'm like i don't have time to pay 70 dollars for a rule and read it <laughs> not only that the rule book is going to be updated within the next three years and you have to buy a new one and get lots of new uh product to be able to play what you were playing before and have it be yeah. up to date yeah abs- yeah exactly yeah none of that, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> we, with the big thing with aegis is we definitely wanted to make it so we set the the, the foundational rules are probably never going to change like we're going to add robots. They're going to work within the rules as described. We'll add game modes, which will work within the rules as described. Um, and yeah, so that was that was that's all. That's always one of the bigger challenges uh, with designing the game is that like we're not going to add anything that works on like a completely different spectrum of reality than everything else. And uh, so, but we were still we were able to get plenty of game out of just like the core idea of Aegis. So. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. You won't have to buy a new rulebook. <laughs> we'll keep you all updated. So I don't need to just have a bookshelf dedicated to Aegis rulebooks. No, you'll have a you know you need a bookshelf dedicated to Aegis expansion. Oh, okay. See, that's a little different though, because because <laughs> you can still play the core game mm-hmm. currently without having to update all your rules and everything you've got. Yeah, and in the future, my the the big goal would be for every expansion of Aegis to be standalone. So you could buy a $20 expansion of Aegis that comes with 20 robots and be able to play it out of the box without having to buy the core set. That's kind of like the, that's the big upper level goal that I have with the game. So standalone uh, expansions to it? Yep. Nice. And every, I want every, I want every expansion for Aegis to be standalone, unless it's like a really cheapo expansion. That's just like here, have some extra cards. But if it comes in a box, if it comes in a box, that will sit on a shelf. I want it to be standalone. So what you do is you make standalones with new game modes, and you just keep adding game modes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then these but, game modes can be added to the core, and then you have your four base core, the campaign, and then every expansion adds a game mode that can be intermingled with the original rules. And then you just go, we have like 50 different game modes that can be interchanged with each other to make about 600 different ways of playing the game. Yep. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I got bored of playing it this way. Can we play a different way? Yeah, we can play a different way. Which way do you want to play? I don't know. Roll a deep percentile. Yeah, actually just roll a dice to figure out what your game mode is. <laughs> you should uh, you should include a randomized chart just to choose like what game modes you're using. Uh, that's going to be a new stretch goal. You get a dartboard that has the different game modes on it. <laughs> It'll be the same way you determine who's a Cylon in Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, right? <laughs> Just throw a dart right at the board. <laughs> this person's a Cylon. We're playing Machine Chess Combined Rondo. Perfect. Oh, now I want to get the game. I have to see if I have money. Do it. Right. <laughs> Was there anything else you want to talk about? Because we've got a lot of good stuff here. I suppose the big thing would be... uh. 
help spread the help spread the news about our game. Never. <laughs> even even though we're above our goal and we're doing really well, the more the more money we get, obviously, um, the better because that ensures that we can, you know, uh, sell the game afterwards, make expansions, do all sorts of cool stuff, be very comfortable with shipping. <laughs> so that's also really good to do. Um, we have like uh, posters that you can print out on our website, uh, ZephyrWorkshop.com, and you can hang them in your local game store, tell your local game groups about the game, uh, tell anyone you know about robots about the game. You can find us on Facebook at Project Aegis, uh, or typing out Facebook.com slash Project Aegis, and uh, on Twitter at Zephyr underscore Workshop. And, uh, you know, like, just uh, uh, tell everybody, that, tell every human that you know. What about, about can I tell robots I know too? Tell, always tell every tell every robot you know. You got an Amazon Echo in your house? Tell the <laughs> Amazon Echo. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> yes. Tell everyone about <laughs> tell everyone about Aegis. Okay. <laughs> Sends out automated tweets to everybody. Yeah, right. Oh, uh, that'd be that'd be great if you could do that with a voice command. I wonder if you can program one of those to tweet for you. Oh, probably. That that Making would uh, a- yeah, you're making a Twitter bot. <laughs> that would that would get you in a lot of trouble when you don't realize it's picking up your words. Yeah, right. <laughs> just, have, just have a Twitter bot in your house that picks up every random thing you say and tweets it. <laughs> oh, some people would get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, I don't even want to don't even want to guess who where you'd get that. So at this point in the show, Nathan usually makes fun of me or says something ridiculously, you know, asinine because he's Nathan. Like, hey, Alex, what do you think about combining robots with your uh, TV? <laughs> but he's not here, so uh, instead of that, we're just going to jump straight into an outro. So, if you want to find more information about uh, Aegis, the Kickstarter, Zephyr Workshop, where should our listeners go? You should absolutely head right over onto uh, well, our Kickstarter page, which you can spare around very easily with uh, robotstrategygame.com. That'll go straight to our Kickstarter. Uh, and then we have a website at zephyrworkshop.com that has all sorts of uh, information about the game. Um, and then our Facebook page, which is our main mode of uh, public communication, is um, facebook.com slash Project Aegis, where we, have, like, we make announcements whenever we do updates, and you can like and share them around, uh, which is probably the most important thing, is just getting the campaign in front of as many eyes as possible. So yeah, uh, tell everybody, robotstrategygame.com, uh, go Sharpie it on a park bench. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not a park bench, maybe on the wall in some bar somewhere. On the, yeah, go, you know, you go do that. And uh, maybe also on the big Gundam statue in Japan. You can write robot strategy game on there. That's <laughs> People will just assume yeah. it's going to a Gundam site at that point. That's true. But yeah, uh, so yeah, just uh you can find information about our game everywhere we also have a youtube channel and a twitch channel you can find us on twitch at uh twitch.tv slash zephyr workshop we will we do streams every week uh at 7 30 on wednesdays uh 7 30 eastern time and then we also have been doing additional streams because it's the kids because it's robot christmas and it's kickstarter so we're going to be doing another stream on Sunday afternoons around 1 p.m. Eastern time. So Wednesdays and Sundays is when you can drop into our chat or uh, play games with us on stream um, or watch us play games on stream and ask us direct questions about the game and the Kickstarter and all that. So I would encourage everybody to uh, definitely uh, hit us up on uh, Twitch and Facebook. Nice. And that'd be Awesome. If you'd like to know more about the show Delve, which you are currently listening to, I swear, Nathan's not here, but it's still Delve, uh, you can go to delvecast.com, one word. It's uh, been up since the beginning of the year, and I'd like to pretend I do a decent job running the site. So we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. If you want to know more about finding the show to listen to, you can also find us on iTunes. Uh, you can also find us on Google Play. And you can probably just Google us and find us if you look up Delve Podcast or Delve Cast. Right here, Nathan would say, we're also on Twitter. You can find Nathan at Citanium. You can find me at EXP Limited. And you can find the show at Delve Podcast on Twitter. And, Breeze, you can find uh, all about you guys over on Twitter, too, can't you? Yep, over at uh, Zephyr Workshop, uh, Zephyr underscore Workshop on Twitter. 
all of it's really, really similar, so you don't have to pretend you're changing names. <laughs> you're combining names, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Our friend, uh, our longtime friend of the game also has a Kickstarter going on right now. So if you don't like robots, but you do like bears, or you do like robots and bears, you can find Ursa Miner on Kickstarter. It's about bears mining Honeycomb Mountain, and it's the most <laughs> adorable thing. <laughs> but yeah, we decided we, we uh, launched on the same day without really knowing it. Um, but he's also uh, thought by Eli Kuzminski, who's a guy who helps run Boston Fig. Nice. Um, and he's, uh, he's the nicest, most adorable guy in the world. And he, he made a game about cute bears. <laughs> so if you're if you're into that, definitely also check out Ursa Minor on Kickstarter. Well, as you may or may not know, Delve has a history with bears. Oh, no. Mostly me. I, I'm, I'm known as the Bear Slayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a thing. A couple people on Twitter won't let it go. Nathan won't <laughs> let it go. Hit a bear with a car one year and no one lets it go. Oh, no. Yep, yep. But uh, we did, at the beginning of this uh, third year, we had um, an entire show about bears. That's great. And I didn't tell Nathan we, who the guest was beforehand, so he had no idea what he was going into. But the entire show was about a game that was about bears. That's awesome. <laughs> so if, yep. if you like bears, check that one out, too. Uh, Breeze says it's good, so we believe him. Exactly. On that note... Uh, Breeze, I would like to thank you on behalf of both Nathan and myself, despite his uh, inability to stay awake. I will, uh, perf okay. I will yell at him next time and tell him he missed a combining good time. Yeah, please do. No, thank you guys so much for having us on. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Love to come on in the future again. Awesome. Great. That'll make your yeah. fourth visit if you come on again in the future, so. Yeah! <laughs> I know I could talk about this game for years. Oh, okay. You, so. you need to make a, uh, a, a bear mech at some point i feel mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah i could see it i could definitely see it there's i forget i think we have a, a i have like a lot of sketches for incoming robots that are kind of come out in the future and uh we have so we have some weird ones in there and i think a bear would be perfectly would be perfectly well and at home in our game we wanted to do a bear to cross promote with ursa minor <laughs> we probably wouldn't if we found out about our shared launch date more than like a week ahead of time you make so cool. you make a uh, couple um robots that are called ursa minor and when they combine with each other they become ursa major oh that's cool yeah so you get like five <laughs> ursa minors together and they become ursa major and it's just like this bear with bears for arms and bears for legs yep. yeah absolutely something like that it's just like a, a triple headed bear or something bear burst. It's not Cerberus, yeah. it's Bearburst. Very good. <laughs> if if I uh if I end up seeing Berberus at some time, I'll just be like, alright, I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the big contribution. <laughs> that's, that's, a bear that's a contribution to uh to Aegis for me. Bearburus. Yeah. Pretty great actually. <laughs> <laughs> All I want is a special thanks to this robot for Delve Podcast. Thanks for the bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Night. You have been listening to Underground Lake City Lightness Shores by Richard Daskus, available on BattleBards. We thank BattleBards for sponsoring Delve. Go to BattleBards.com, create an account, make your first purchase, and during checkout, use coupon code DELV1 for 10 and $25 packages to get a free track. Delve 2 on $50 and $100 packages to get 5 tracks, or Delve 3 for $150 and $300 packages to get 10 tracks. That's like a full album, just by using the code. BattleBards.com. Go now. Cool. So far, I think this is great. I have to actually, yeah. I have to actually talk this time. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Usually Nathan just goes with question after question after question. And we're just like, I, I have something I want to ask to Nathan. And I'm like, oh, look, he shut up. <laughs> and then I then I ask, and then Nathan keeps going, because usually it's, it's he's really good with the journalistic part of this, because that's his background. He's done journalism. So he's like, hey, so this, this, that, 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 that. And I'm like, okay, I'll let you do your thing, and I'll just ask the other important questions, like about mechanics and about the game and things you don't think about, Nathan. But now it's all me, and I'm like, ugh... This is why I have a co-host. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. Man, we've been talking for an hour and Nathan's not even here. Nathan! No, he's gonna be like, how did you how did you not get like confused? I'm like, cause you're not here to make fun of me. 